a long-awaited event for all of Ukraine. The night before, some of the Ukrainian members of the Azov regiment were finally evacuated from Mariupol's Azov style. Ten buses with our defenders left the iron and steel works. On May 16, 53 seriously wounded Ukrainian servicemen were evacuated from Azovstal to a medical facility in Novozovsk for medical care. Another 211 people were taken to Lenivka through the humanitarian corridor. An exchange procedure will be carried out for their further return home. This was the first stage of the evacuation. There are still some Ukrainian servicemen in the basements of Azovstal. According to President Volodymyr Zelensky, the main goal is to return all defenders alive. To bring the guys home. The work continues, and this work needs delicacy and time. We also maintain maximum diplomatic activity in other areas in the interests of Ukraine. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine called the members of the Azov regiment heroes of our time and thanked them for their accomplished combat mission. By putting themselves under attack, they enabled the Ukrainian army to regroup in other directions. In this way, they managed to prevent the capture of strategically important Ukrainian territories. War is an art, not a science, when you have accomplished the assigned task and saved the maximum number of personnel. That is the highest level of troop management, especially when your decision is approved by the highest military leadership. Glory to Ukraine! Meanwhile, the Russian occupiers continue to deport residents of Mariupol. According to British investigators, 66 camps were formed on Russian territory, most of them in the Far East. In the last two days alone, more than 300 Mariupol residents have been forcibly removed, 52 of them children. They take out not only people, but also property, including metal. To do this, the enemy is trying to restore the work of the port. The enemy continues to terrorize the civilian population with constant shelling. This morning, in the village of Desnachernihi region, began with rocket attacks. Casualties were reported. There are rescuers and law enforcement agencies working there. According to preliminary information, there are killed and many wounded. Residents of the Lviv region woke up at night with several loud explosions. The air defense system worked well in the city of Lviv. Although a missile in the Novoyarivska community was not shot down, no casualties or damage have been reported so far. During the night, the enemy launched a missile attack on the infrastructure of the Lviv Railway regional branch in the Yavoriv district. The explosion damaged the railway infrastructure. There is no information about casualties or deaths. According to preliminary information, the missiles were launched from the east. Maxim Kozitsky, head of the Lviv Regional Military Administration. 20 residents, including a child, have been killed in the Donetsk region over the past day. Enemy shells destroyed a hospital, a kindergarten, an ice arena and a large number of residential buildings in Drushkivka. The situation remains tense in the Luhansk region and in Severodonetsk itself. According to the head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai, at least 10 civilians were killed over the past day. The enemy fired randomly at residential apartment buildings. The hospital was also hit again. All the buildings of the medical facility were partially destroyed. This is how the temporarily occupied town of Rubizhne in the Luhansk region looks now. More than 80 percent of residential buildings have been destroyed by enemy troops. Residents were left without gas, electricity and water. They can't contact their relatives either. No less horrific video is from the village of Oleksandrivka in the Kherson region. Fierce battles were fought on this territory for almost a month. The video does not show a single house that survived. Meanwhile, the Russian occupiers do not allow the residents of Kherson region to enter the territory under Ukrainian control. According to eyewitnesses, there is a traffic jam of more than a thousand cars at the exit from the region. People have been standing for the fourth day in the hope that they will be allowed through. In the city of Kherson, Ukrainians do not give up and draw Ukrainian symbols on bus stops and poles, showing the Russians that they do not belong here. They also hang the torn Ukrainian flags back on the buildings, which are constantly being destroyed by the Russian occupiers.
According to information from the Zaporizhia Military Regional Administration, the occupation authorities of Anarhodar are beginning preparations for a so-called referendum. The Russians want to create an informational picture that the residents of the nuclear city are expressing their desire to join Russia and finally join the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to Rosatom to destroy Ukraine's energy system, the Porizhia Regional Military Administration. The Kharkiv, Severodonetsk, Liman, Avdiivka and Kurahiv directions remain hotspots. All attempts of the enemy to break through are unsuccessful. Ukrainian troops repulsed 11 attacks and destroyed five air targets. They managed to push the Russian troops away from two settlements in the Luhansk region, Yirske and Sirotine. George Barros, an analyst at the Institute for the Study of War, a Washington-based think tank spoke about the success of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kharkiv direction. In an interview with Radio Liberty, he suggested that Ukraine would launch a large-scale counteroffensive as soon as possible. Those are going to be very important and we believe that the battles the Ukrainians are getting into right now are setting conditions for their fight in and around the Zoom that are going to be very decisive for this current phase of the war in Ukraine given the way that the Ukrainians have largely eviscerated the Russian officer corps all the way from the battalion level to even the army level and all the echelons in between. That loss of human potential is going to take a generation to rebuild. George Barras, analyst at the Institute for the Study of War, a Washington-based think tank. As early as mid-July, Ukrainian troops will be able to launch a large-scale counteroffensive. This was stated by Oleksiy Rostovich, advisor to the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine. It is by this time that Ukraine will be able to receive from the West a sufficient amount of necessary weapons. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Alexander Belov, UATV News.